Hello and welcome to this special episode of The Chainsaw Files. And this episode is special for a couple of reasons. First, it's actually my 2000 subscriber bonus episode. So thanks so much to all of you who subscribed to my channel and made basically this what I do possible. Second, it's about time to do my annual iteration of the Ultimate Chainsaw Comparison. So therefore, I did something special. I'll do a comparison of every HM2 pedal that I own or that I've borrowed and right now here in my place. But first of all, I'll give you an overview of which pedals I own and maybe say a couple of things. So you basically get an hour or two hour long episode of me talking about the different pedals and after that you get the comparison as always in front of a clean amp and in front of a distorted amp. I think I'll switch amps and don't use my usual review amps but you'll find out when I show you. So I kind of tried to order the pedals to uh, kind of similar groups but this is no ranking or whatever. So first of all we start with the pedals that are discontinued. And we have this HM2 that's built in Japan. It's my main HM2. I use it for every chainsaw comparison you see. I really like this pedal. It sounds kind of hi-fi. It's not as dirty as an HM2 can be, but I really like it. As for the next pedal, I have another HM2, but this one is made in Taiwan and it's a little more dirty sounding. And I bought another one original HM2 built in Taiwan as well. This one I bought from the Death Rides guitar player. Uh, he didn't use it so I made a really good deal and bought it. And I initially bought it to use live with Nightbearer but I switched again and I'll show you in a minute. We stay at the Asian Realm and I have three very similar pedals now. I think I'll do another video on them but here we are, we have the Arion Metal Master, bought it for very few money, and the Aria Ultra Metal, it's basically a clone of the Arion, and I also have the Ken Multi Metal Master. The final fourth pedal is the Rocktech Metal Worker, and those four pedals or those three pedals. They came in a couple iterations, they have some slightly either optical improvements or little changes and I happen to have those. I'm still looking for all the other ones. I've heard that there is a black rock tech metal worker that sounds way better than this piece of plastic. So yeah, I'm still searching for this one. And the last pedal from Asia to be precise, it's made in China. and. With this one, I'm not actually quite sure if it's discontinued or not, but I haven't found it new in Germany, so I think it is. The Behringer Heavy Metal HM300. This one is the second, I think, HM2 pedal that I bought. First one was my original Made in Japan HM2, by the way. Um, and I used it initially for the first HM2 band that I had, the Nemetus Process. Um, but I quickly realized that this pedal wasn't meant to be played live. Although both guitar players of the Swedish death metal band Lig actually use the Behringer's live. But for me it wasn't as solid as I wanted. Moving over to America, but we'll stay in the same color range. I own the Dot Super American Metal as well as the Dot American Metal. Those pedals are really close to the HM2 but, I, but they're kind of doing their own thing. It's a very subtle difference but you can definitely hear it when comparing the two. Going a bit south and the next two pedals are actually a donation from one of you guys so thank you so much for this. I, it would be, wouldn't be possible for me to actually own them or rather review them because they're basically non-existent here over in Germany or Europe. So thank you dude, you know exactly who you are. It's 
the Oliver HM20. It's a licensed clone from Boss, especially made for the Brazilian market. And the Chorus HY20. This was made, uh, the Chorus is a Brazilian company, I think. And I don't know if this is broken or not, but this pedal sounds really interesting in a bad way. And last not least, for the discontinued pedals, we go up north to Canada. I own the Aeris Effects Merciless Drive. This one is really more or less a drive and not a distortion pedal. It has way less gain than any other of my HM2 clones. But because of this, you can really good dial in the gain if you're searching for a nice boost but still want to obtain this chainsaw flavor. The next category are more or less still available direct clones of the HM2. And since last pedal was from Canada, we start with the pedal from Canada. Uh, my recently purchased Guptek Torch. And yes, you can order it in another color. We continue with the well-known TC Electronics iMaster. It doesn't have an EQ control, um, but the EQs are dialed in to max internally. So it's still sufficient for the HM2 style sound. Uh, this pedal was actually used by Nightbearer's second guitar player Christian for quite some time as his main HM2 unit, but he switched over to another pedal. And this other pedal was built by Tony Papers from New Zealand and I happen to own the HM2 many clones from him. And Christian owns a custom HM2 clone from him as well, which is now his main distortion. Now for the next pedal, I'm not quite sure if you can still order it or if this is kind of a prototype. But from Anarchy Audio there is this HM2 clone. Uh, it's one of the first HM2 pedals I owned. I bought it used from eBay France or so I guess. And it uh, does the job quite well. We stay a bit in Europe and move over to Belgium. There is JD Music Labs and they build two HM2 pedals. One I just borrowed and I don't own. But the other one and I think it's the better one. I still own, it's the SDM from JD Music Labs. Now we're moving to Spain and I think all of you have heard of Decibelix Pedal Boutique and he makes an awesome job in recreating the HM2 sound in a mini pedal format and I own the Angry Sweet Volume 1. This is a prototype, it's a prototype 7 actually, but I think he didn't change anything to the serial model. And I own a prototype of the version 2 with an added blend knob. And this one was specially built for me, so thanks Gilliam for this. And the last more or less direct clone I own is from Ren and Cuff, it's the Hangman 2D. Um, I think this is kind of limited color. Um, I actually haven't played around with it much, I just did the review and then kind of forgot about it. So I'm eager to find out how it sounds when I spend some more time with it. That's it for the direct clones and now we continue with the boutique and improved HM2 pedals that I own. And we start where we left in Europe. And Germany actually has a couple of builders that do highly improved and really good HM2 boutique pedals. We start with KMA Audio Machines, The Wurm. You must have heard of this pedal, it's one of the best HM2 pedals out there. And I used it, but in The Wurm mode, you basically have two different EQ options. And I deactivated the HM2 EQ and activated the Wurm EQ. And this was the second layer of the guitar sound of Nightbearer's first record. Another small company from Germany is Electric Roots and they have a HM2 clone as well. It's the Contagion. What's really cool about this pedal is that it has this phase switch where you can switch phases and in combination with the blend control we get some really nasty EQ cancellation that really sound rotten and dirty. Really like this pedal. And now a behemoth of a pedal from Germany as well, from Clearton, it's the Grindstein. And what's special about this pedal is that it's 
has a built-in distortion channel as well and you can basically mix or blend between the HM2 channel and the, chain, uh, the amp channel which is called bottom shaker. And this pedal has a ton of options, you can use it alone, you don't need any amp to get a good sound, you just need some impulse responses, but it has quite some price tag to it. But anyways, I own one. From Russia comes the next pedal that I own, it's the XYX Tech HMD1. This pedal is really versatile, it also has a unique fun function, it's the focus control that basically uh, moves the two high peaks away from each other or closer together. So really interesting feature. I think I have to review this pedal once again because it's so full of sounds I haven't explored yet. But of course HM2 boutique pedals aren't built in Europe solely. The US has some awesome builders as well. And we have for example the Vorus Audio Red. This was one of the first boutique clones that I owned or I bought especially for this channel. Um, to be quite honest I don't like this sound much but I think it's the same as for the XYX Tech pedal. I have to review it one more time to fully unlock its potential. And another pedal that I own is from Abominal Electronics, it's the Throne Torture. This one is kind of weird pedal. I actually don't like the sound much but I heard that a lot of you guys really like the sound so I kept it and maybe I can get a nice sound out of it in the later comparison. The next two pedals I own are from Dunwich Electronics and I own their... It doesn't have a name actually, it's their HM2 clone. Um, highly improved with the two switches and the four knobs. Um, it gives you a really unique HM2 sound. It's very rotten, I think. The mid gap is even more drastic on this one. And I mostly use it to add another layer for the chainsaw sound if I ever need one. The other pedal I own from Dunwich is the Nihilist and I'm actually not sure if this is kind of prototype or not. Um, because on the hands are some uh, drilling hole positionings that aren't used. Um, but it's a really nice pedal, it has this focus control that does all kinds of weird things. Uh, really like this sound. And now to the, in my opinion at least, best company when it comes to HM2 pedals. Yes, I am endorsed by Lone Wolf Audio and I don't care, it's my humble opinion, I don't get any money to say this. I think those are the best HM2 improved pedals out there. Prove me wrong, say, you are, say you're wrong, I'm okay with this, it's my opinion and because it's my channel I can say what I want. Um, speaking of Lone Wolf Audio of course, I currently own three HM2 pedals but I'll get some more in the future I hope. We start with the 8-ball EQ, this is just the EQ section of a uh, left hand ref. Uh, and you need, or in, at least in my opinion, you need a drive pedal or a distortion pedal in front of it to achieve a good chainsaw sound. And I of course own an original left hand ref. This one is a limited edition in orange with an added blend knob. I think this wasn't common with this particular production year. It's my main distortion unit that I use with Nightbearer and I couldn't be more happy with this pedal, it's so, so good. For the studio, I use another left-hand ref um, where I need some more tweaking options and this is the left-hand ref Deluxe. I have my favorite setting on this, but with the frag knob, with the boost switch here and with the blend or the sub control, you can get some really different results if you want. And this is my main HM2 unit when I record. That's all the clones that I own, but I happen to own a couple of pedals that can do the chainsaw sound as well, be it via accident or be it if there are, have some hidden features or you have to tweak a bit. Uh, anyways, they do the chainsaw sound, therefore they are into this comparison and I want to show them to you. We start with Boss again, the classic Distortion DS1. It was used by Grave 
and when you crank it it gives you really nice uh, chainsaw-ish sound. It's not it's no real chainsaw but it's a very good layer. Entombed used one on the left hand path for the center guitars and well if you know Grave, Grave used the DS1 exclusively. And I also own the successor, the Turbo Distortion DS2 and especially in the Turbo mode, so mode 2, it has a nice a distorted sound. It's really more of le more or less a hi-fi sound, more clearer or so, but it uh, can still do a nice chainsaw sound. Therefore, it is into this comparison. Another pedal from Boss, the one of uh, the two successors for the HM2. Uh, the other one is the MT2, but I don't think the MT2 can do a good chainsaw. Therefore, it's not included in this comparison. And the Hypermetal HM3, it said that it can do a nice chainsaw. I don't like the sound I can achieve with it, but I think it's kind of close more or less, and therefore I include it, and therefore it counts as a more or less HM2 clone. When you watched a couple of my recent videos, you are aware that I own a Digitech Death Metal, and it can do a chainsaw-ish sound when you fully crank the mids and reduce the highs. So it's included. I can't forget to include the full bore metal. You have to tweak the mids and you have to be careful with the scoop sound, but it can do a chainsaw as well. And the last pedal never seen before on this channel, so it's kind of premiere here. It's, I have an ele electro harmonics metal muff with top boost and this pedal should do an HM2-ish sound if my subscribers are right. So we'll find out in the comparison. So that's all the HM2 style pedals that I own, but I have currently two more pedals right here in my studio. The first is the MT2 modded by Anarchy Audio. It's the HMT2, I think it's called, and I borrowed it from my good friend, the interface. I still haven't sent it back. I think I should do it in the next week or days or so, but I still have it here and it's I think it's the best mod you can do to your MT2. I really like this pedal. I still have to convince NQ Audio to send me one or at least to buy one locally in Australia modded and then sell it to me. And the other one I borrowed directly from KMA Audio Machines. It's uh, one of the most recent videos on this channel, it's the Dead Stack and it's basically a fast distortion pedal based on a big muff, but I found out that it can do a nice chainsaw-ish sound as well. So we'll include it for this comparison. So that makes a total of 32 direct HM2 clones or improved HM2 boutique versions and six pedals that can do the chainsaw by accident and two pedals that I borrowed, which make a total of 40 pedals that are in this comparison. We'll start with a clean amp and after that we'll start with a distorted amp, my favorite setting for the HM2 sound. I've set every pedal to where I think it sounds best, so I haven't maxed every control knob. You can see a photo of the actual settings uh, while the riff is playing. Um, yeah, have fun and enjoy this comparison. And again, thank you for all of you who've subscribed to my channel and I hope it grows more, so maybe 2.5k.
So yeah, that was the comparison. Which one was your favorite? My favorite should be clear if you've watched the presentation of each pedal that I did in the beginning. So let me know down in the comments which pedal you preferred. Anyways, thank you for watching, don't forget to subscribe, may the force be with you and have a nice day.